Yo, what is going on YouTube? It is your boy GZTV back with another video. We are back with the horror movies. We're kind of returning to that scratch it poster. I still have a lot of movies to go on that. It's going to keep me held over for at least like four or five months for content in that aspect. Obviously, I'm going to have to think of some things. You know, I started to think about this like when the NBA season is over and when the NFL. Well, when the NFL season's over, I think we'll do an extra Sopranos video. But, um, yeah. Uh, host, we are here to talk about the 2020 British independent supernatural horror film directed by Rob Savage and written by him, Gemma Hurley, and Jed Shepard. So, it's an indie movie. It's obviously not an A-list movie. There's not a lot of, I don't even think there's any like huge actors and actresses on here. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Indie films are always cool to peep into and especially... It was super culturally relevant when it came out, obviously, with the quarantine and, like, being on Zoom. I think that has an interesting touch on it, so let's get into the plot and then my review of it. By the way, this movie was only an hour long, so obviously, there's not going to be a whole lot happening in it. it. It pretty much centers around a meeting, so... Yeah, um, so getting into the plot, so during a July 2020 COVID-19 breakdown in London, friends Haley, Gemma, Radina, Emma, Caroline, and Teddy join the weekly Zoom call they have been using to stay in touch. That's how you talk to friends, and obviously when I was in quarantine, I, I was using video games as that, you know, hopping on the game with my boys and that type of thing. You had to still like keep in touch with your friends at the time. And, and this is such a cool thing to look back on. This was literally made of the year that COVID-19 started, which is super cool and super impressive that they did this. They just hopped on the opportunity. Now, I don't think I don't think this was a super huge success. I think they made like 300k profit, but I mean, yeah. Um, Haley has arranged for them to partake in a virtual séance led by the medium Salem who emphasizes that they should not disrespect the spirits, though only Haley takes it seriously, and she kind of warns people, like, you're supposed to, you know, take this seriously. But um, they decide not to do that. They decide to, like, push it off as some joke, kind of. I don't know. It's really weird. So, yeah, you can't disrespect spirits. They're a real thing. Like, you have to be aware of that or something. But... Uh, Teddy is forced to leave the call when his girlfriend Jenny disconnects him because obviously she wants to spend time with him and whatnot. So Gemma claims to feel intense tension around her neck and begins to cry, explaining that she feels the presence of a school friend who killed himself by hanging, and pretty soon we learn that that was not true and she's telling a joke, which, again, you can't disrespect spirits, you can't, like, mock them and st stuff, so... Salen's internet cuts out um, and disconnects her from the call, prompting a laughing Gemma to admit to the group that she made her deceased friend up because she was getting bored, which angers Haley. Haley is obviously the one, again, the only one that's taking this thing seriously. It's like, you don't want to tempt these spirits. It's, it's a real thing. The seance, the medium is telling you these things. And it's so, uh, uh, we get like a post-movie thing, which is kind of cool. But uh, we'll get to that in a second. So, uh, the remaining members begin to experience terrifying phenomena. Haley's chair is violently pulled backwards by an unseen force. The legs of a hanging corpse briefly appear in Caroline's attic when she goes to investigate a noise. And Emma's wine glass shatters even though nobody is holding it. So, it's super interesting. You know, all these things start to happen. The movie doesn't really pick up its intensity until about 20 minutes into it. And you gotta think, like, we're already a third of the way through the movie, you know. So, it's kind of interesting there. Um... So Haley points her instant camera down the hallway to take a photo of her living room, which shows a ghostly figure hanging from the ceiling. Again, these things with hangings and all that stuff, it's really weird. Um, I don't know. But uh, as the girls panic, Haley manages to get back in touch with Salen and tell her what happened, prompting Salen to ask the spirit a series of yes or no questions. Using this method, she quickly confirms that the spirit is not a friendly one because, again, you disrespected the spirit. You didn't respect... You didn't respect the spirits, so, yeah, it, like, you didn't even acknowledge that they're real or, res you know, it, it's, it's stupid, obviously. I mean, some people, other people do the same thing, and this is just a surreal experience for these people, I guess. 
So, Salen explains that Gemma's prank, which involved fabricating a deceased person, may have led a tulpa to take on the guise of the deceased person and wear his identity like a mask that allows the demon to pass into the world of the living. This is pretty much a portal. This is pretty much a gateway for the spirit to take on whoever, what other kind of spirit they can take on. And, yeah, it's a, it's a super fucked up situation that pretty much Gemma got them into. Um, you can't mim mimic and make up dead people like that's you know so she gives them instructions on how to close the seance but the demon interrupts her and she is disconnected again before the girls attempt to close the circle using her advice and obviously they're not experted on this thing so they're not going to be very successful with it uh relieved that the ordeal seems to be over the members of the group begin to leave the call but then shit starts to go down and we're getting into some high intense city situations here Rodina leaves the room, unaware of her boyfriend Alan's body hanging right behind her. Caroline's Zoom background, which shows a looping video of her doing chores, continues playing as the real Caroline suddenly has her face smashed through the camera, which was quite terrifying. Like, I will admit, there were some aspects of this movie that were genuinely scary, and it was impressive how creepy it kind of was. But, um... Forgetting to switch off the filter that superimposes mask and face paint onto her, Emma turns her camera towards her living room where the filter places a kabuki mask on an invisible fi figure which then turns to look at her. And she realizes that spirit, a spirit's in her house and this entity starts to kind of affect everyone in the Zoom call. She runs away and scatters flour on the floor showing the footprints of the demon approaching her. That was kind of a reference to paranormal activity a little bit there. Uh, a little callback, we reviewed that movie a little while ago. Um, her kitchen cupboards burst open before the demon attacks her, but she escapes into her bedroom. So then, uh, Radina attempts to flee after Alan's body drops down behind her, but the demon kills her by throwing her into a wall. So again, it kind of works like a normal horror film while the victims are killed throughout the movie. The characters are killed throughout the movie. Uh, noticing that Caroline is typing gibberish in the chat, having been possessed or something, Haley and Gemma watch as her camera turns back on to show her being killed by the demon, repeatedly smashing her head into her keyboard while she pleads for help, which is super fucked up, obviously. Super disturbing. Her death was probably one of the more disturbing of it all. I mean, this was a pretty unsettling movie, obviously. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, <clears throat> so, Haley and Gemma argue and blame each other after Haley is pulled out of the room. So now it's pretty much just Gemma and Emma, funny enough. Gemma, who lives around the corner from Haley, immediately leaves her home to help. Teddy, well, Teddy's back, too. He re returns for a brief moment. Teddy returns to the call to see that only Emma remains, and a warning pops up to remind the group that the call will end in 10 minutes unless they upgrade to the premium version of Zoom. It's just so funny, like, all these current issues. It's like, oh, yeah. I, and I kind of forget that this was a thing at the time. I think Zoom now you can call however long you want. But there was like a thing where they were trying to, Microsoft was really trying to make money off of that. <laughs> so unaware of everything that has occurred, Teddy believes Emma is pranking him. But he is attacked by the demon after it takes the form of a horrifying humanoid figure. Again, if you don't take this shit serious enough and you don't think the demons are serious enough, you're going to get affected by it. Uh, he is chased into his garden where he sees Jenny being lifted into the air before his neck is, her neck is snapped and her body falls into the swimming pool. So now she gets killed by the demon even though she's not even involved with this friend group or on this call. And it's kind of weird that he's on a call with a bunch of girls and he has a girlfriend. I think that's, I, it would have been cool to kind of explain that and like how they're friends. But yeah, he runs away and hides using a lighter to see where he is going. But the demon distracts him with an eerie music box his brother used to prank him with as a child so there's an interesting kind of origin story with that the demon then knocks him down and he drops the lighter causing a fire that burns him to death so his death was a little more interesting i guess than the others a little more conventional or not conventional a little more like resourceful you know of the environment but um emma now the only person still active in the call tearfully turns her camera towards the door of her room after it opens and i think that's her and both of the slides like she's like the final girl of the movie she's one of the most impactful characters on the movie uh, she throws a blanket which drapes itself over an invisible human shape she opens her window to escape but trips and falls to her death now i don't know if that's exactly what happened i think she was thrown out the window to her death uh Gemma breaks into Haley's home and checks the zoom call on Haley's laptop to see that emma and teddy are dead so now it's just her 
And now she is no longer the final girl that we said because Gemma and Haley are the final people. Um, the demon smashes a wine bottle over her head and starts to destroy the kitchen, but she recovers and finds Haley hiding under her desk with a pair attempting to escape the house using the flash of Haley's instant camera to light the way. The phone flashlight, it's another modern thing, you know. The demon appears in the final flash of light, taking the form of a mutilated human, and rushes at them as the Zoom call timer expires. Now, we don't really know what happens to these characters. This movie kind of leads on a sort of mysterious note, which is cool. But, yeah, let's get into the review. I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect me to talk about the plot that much, but the review is going to be short and kind of to the point. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's actually really cool for what resources they had and the budget. I think... For a 100k budget, I think this was really good. I, I mean, the only way is the money, way they spent the money was probably on paying the cast, paying the cast, and paying for the seance. Like that's really it, which is funny. So, it's lean, suspenseful, and scary. Host uses its timely premise to deliver a nastily effective treat for horror enthusiasts. Now you can complain all you want that this is like a low quality horror film, but it's only an hour long, and it was done over Zoom. So. What can you really say? I think it's a pretty dope movie. I think people genu generally like it as a whole. Um, you know, center. You know, the movie being centered around its themes of social separation and social anxiety with the pandemic was really cool. A lot of commentary there. Um, you know, it's kind of like the movie Unfriended back from 2014, which was a horror film that also featured supernatural activity occurring during a group video chat, which was obviously like FaceTime. It was before Zoom, so it's interesting to kind of get a more modern take. It's damn near a remake of that film with, like, new tropes and stuff like that. It's pretty cool, man. Um, it, 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 it's a great movie for quarantine because, obviously, there weren't that much many movies brewing up that year. You know, it is not only one of the best horror movies of quarantine of that time, but also an intimate look at creativity, film production, and a shared global culture in the throes of a rampaging virus. Um, you know, the film's novel portrayal of, has a novel portrayal of lockdown-induced paranoia. It, it's the first great entry in the new genre of quarantine horror. Obviously, we got a lot more movies like that after this. But yeah, I feel like this is one of the big ones. Um, and this was a pretty successful movie, though, like, relatively. It made over four, time, four times its budget, which is great. That's a great margin of profit. These people obviously didn't like think this was even going to be a mainstream success um it got nominated for some indie awards stuff like that um i don't know if it won anything no nah, i think it just got nominated but that's cool that at least it be up there as an indie film uh, it was a shutter original as well those movies usually aren't that good but i think for everything on the ta being on the table, I think this was quite a fantastic movie. Next, we are watching the 2011 movie Sleep Tight, which we will review on the channel. I'm kind of getting back into horror films. Uh, it's going to be interesting this weekend. I don't know how content is going to go, but leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Later tonight, we will obviously have an NBA recap as we do every weekday. I think after the NBA season, I'm going to start doing like a daily news type of segment where we react and talk about stuff. We'll see how things go. You know, we got to take content one day at a time. So I'm out, guys. Have a good rest of your day.